This is a talk about getting it right the first time, stopping 80% of accessibility bugs during development. So before we dive in, I'm gonna get some brief introductions. My name is Jason Wilson. I'm a developer at DQ Systems. Um, my pronouns are he, him. I work on the Axe DevTools extensions and related tools, and I will let Glenda introduce herself. Howdy, y'all. I'm Glenda the Good Witch Sims, coming to you from Austin, Texas, and I lead the accessibility expert team here. I've been at DeQ for 10 years, and I thank my lucky stars for my career in this field. Um, my mentors were Jim Thatcher that we're doing the Lifetime Award for, as well as John Slayton and Sharon Rush. Jason, take it away. Thanks, Glenda. So a little bit of what we're going to be covering today. Obviously, we're going to be talking about automated testing with Axe DevTools Pro, um, which is a free browser extension offered by DQ. We have a little bit of a demo website that has some accessibility um, issues uh, baked into it so that we will work through the extension, find out how to resolve those. Once we work through that, um, uh, Glenda will talk about a little bit about what's covered by those automated tests, what percentage of WCAG coverage there is, and then after that, we will go dive into a little bit of intelligent guided testing with Active Tools Pro, which is a little more in-depth tool than just automated testing. Finally, after we cover that again through the demo site, uh, we're gonna Glenda will come back and talk about what's covered by the combination of automated test and intelligent guided testing, um, and talk a little bit about what's covered by the combination of those two steps. Finally, uh, we will follow up with how to get to 100% WCAG 2.1 AA testing coverage after completing both automated testing and intelligent guided testing. So let's talk about automated testing with the Axe DevTools extension. So why use Axe DevTools automated testing? One of the great things about the extension is it's built right into your browser and there's no upfront accessibility knowledge needed. So you don't have to be an accessibility expert in order to use the extension. And you know, since it's built into your browser, it's easy to save a lot of development time by finding many accessibility issues early. Like as you're working on a page, um, you can pull up the extension in your DevTools, run a quick scan, and get results back very quickly. So there's a short loop in order to find these issues early. And kind of following along with the concept of shifting left, you want to find these issues ideally as soon as possible. So you know, if you find them when you're developing, they don't end up in the hands of real users. And you know, since it's built on Axe Core, uh, we really strive for zero false positives. So that means that when you see an issue, you know that that's going to be an actual issue um, that was raised and not something that was falsely flagged. And as I mentioned before, get results in seconds. You can very quickly um, work it into your workflow and get back results. So what we'll be going over in the demo, we'll talk about a little bit about remediating using inf issue information provided by the tool how you can isolate specific elements by scanning just a part of the page. So this really lets you focus just on the thing that you're working on or just a small section of the page. Finally, we will talk a little bit about a new feature added for the past year of where you can select a WCAG level of between A or AAA or 2.1 to 2.0 in order to customize the type of issues that are returned. So now we're gonna dive into a little bit of a brief coding session. I will leave this link up uh, for a second, and I believe Liz is also going to place it into the chat. You do not need to follow along, or you do not have to go to the, the site in order to work. This will just contain the code examples that we're doing as we work through the live coding session today. So let's dive into that. So what we have here is we have a fictional website uh, of a pizza delivery company that does pizza delivery by drones. Um, this is uh, completely fictional of where we built this just to have some baseline accessibility issues built in. So this page consists of a header um, with a title link along with some menu items, along with a hero section that displays um, some short, brief, detailed information about how to place your order and what the steps required are. Below that, there's another section talking about what's popular um, with some card of different images of the items that you can order, along with the description of the item and a cost. Finally, at the very bottom of the page, there is a fre frequently asked questions um, to answer questions that people might have about this fictional company. So Axe DevTools Pro, again, I mentioned it's built into the browser. Um, it's available for Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. So if you are, if you are developing, 
and you have the extension installed, you can pull up your extension. I'm on Mac, so I can do uh, command option I to pull up my dev tools on Windows. It's control shift I for F12. So once I open my dev tools, I see that I now have the extension installed and there is a tab here labeled Axe Dev Tools. So going to this, I can see right here, there's a, there's a call to action of let's get started. One click away from scanning your site with the most widely used trusted accessibility tool in the world. And this is about, again, shorting the loop. I can just click this button here. It says scan on my page and see that I quickly get results. So what we see here is we have a list of the total issues return of the page in this specific state, along with a number of automated issues and guided issues, which are issues raised by intelligent guided test, which we will get into later. There's also issue severity of critical, moderate, minor, and serious. And we can see here, just clicking that button and running a scan gave us five serious issues. Below that, we have another section that displays uh, two types of issues with the issue description of elements must have sufficient color contrast. You can see that we have two issues there and elements should have a tab, should not have a tab index greater than zero, um, which we can see we have three of. So if I'm a developer and I'm working on this page, I can see that I have five issues and I wanna to try to figure out how can I resolve these issues quickly? So once we click on an issue description, we have a little bit of details about the type of issue raised along as where that issue is located. So we can view this description and see that this is telling us that the contrast between the foreground and background colors must meet WCAG 2 AA contrast ratio thresholds. Below that, it gives us a CSS selector of the element of where it's located on the page, and this should be unique for all the issues, along with the element source. So if I'm a developer and I'm trying to figure out where this is, maybe this isn't enough information. So we have some additional tools here that we can help. I can click on, once I'm on an issue, I can click on highlight, and that issue will be highlighted on the page with a pink focus ring, um, with a tooltip some, with some very basic details about the element as well. If that's not enough, I can also click on the inspect here that will bring me over to the browser's uh, element navigation tree directly to the element, which I can find out more details with as well here. If, this, if the details mentioned in the description are not enough for me to find the issue remediation or figure out what's going on, I can click on more info. So let's go ahead and do that now. So for this particular issue, since it's a color contrast issue, um, it's gonna tell me a little bit about uh, why that's an issue along with uh, having color contrast now analyzer here that allows me to plug in some values and um, figure out what the accessibility issues are and actually fix the problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I want to try and figure out where this color is coming from. So I'm gonna click on inspect. I can see here that it's coming from this list element. I can go back to the DevTools panel. It's gonna tell me a little bit that I need to fix the following, fix the color contrast ratio of foreground color of white and a background color of 1998FA. So I can go back to that inspect. I wanna find that color. I can look here, I can scan down. I can see here that it's actually coming from this uh, CSS variable of accent alt color. So now I can know where this issue is located on the element. I can go back to my code and figure out, um, actually, I can go back here. One second. So I'm gonna go ahead, copy the background color. So I know that my foreground, or it shouldn't matter, but I'm um, gonna go ahead and put this in here and blur it out. And we can see here that it's it's giving us a fail value for double A and triple A and small text, and a pass for double A and triple A of large text. Um, so if I were working with a designer, I might want to work with them to find an accessible color. For now, we're just going to pick a color that passes. So we're going to adjust this slider over until we get to a contrast ratio that is satisfactory. I'm going to copy that value, go back to my code, so I know that this is located in my variables in my code for CSS. I can paste that there, save it. For this particular demo site, it live reloads. So the change is already made on that page. I can make this change in DevTools as well and rescan. But since it's reload, live reload, I'm gonna go ahead, rerun the scan, and now see those issues have gone away. So the short loop for that to solve, to, to find the issue, find out what I need to do to fix it, 
was just a few short minutes. So there's a very quick loop in order to resolve that problem. But let's say I have a page that has a lot of accessibility issues and there's a lot of noise and I'm kind of getting lost in the noise. Well, there's an, another additional feature that we can do is to really help us focus in by scanning a part of the page. So I'm going to click on start new scan and see there is an additional button here that tells me that I can scan a part of my page. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And when I do, that's gonna activate my mouse cursor on the page um, with a selection ring around different elements that I can select once I click on them. So I want to, I, I saw that there was a bunch of issues raised by these particular cards here. Since this is potentially something raised by a design system, um, I wanna focus just on that partic one particular component and just to really get that issue resolved. So I'm going to click, try to select it here. I know it's that list of card. If you're unable to use a mouse, we do have an alternate way of selecting those elements. So I'm gonna go ahead, delete that there and navigate through the element selector, navigate to that element in uh, the DOM tree here, select it and then scan. So now we can see I've isolated from three issues down to just one issue that is associated with that very specific element. Um, so like we did for color contrast, I want to also try and fix this as well. So I'm gonna look at the remediation help here. It's gonna tell me that I need to ensure that I have a tab index attribute value um, that's not greater than zero. I can see here it's giving me an element location of button um, that has an attribute I've already described by, as well as the element source. So I can see here this button here, it looks like it's going to be in our order component. It has a tab index of one. So I'm going to tab back to my code and go find that element in order to fix it. So we can see here, here's our tab index attribute value. Um, since I know this is no longer needed, I can go ahead and delete it, save. The page will live reload. I can rerun this scan and now see that I have resolved accessibility issues for that specific element. So now that I've done both of those steps, I wanna go back to start a new scan and scan all my page again to make sure that I've resolved all the accessibility issues for this page in the state. And we can see here that great, we've we've gone to the end of our journey of testing using the Axe Dev Tools extension on this page in this particular state. But just so you're aware, you're not. This isn't the end of the journey journey yet because um, this just tests the page in the state that it's in right now. So you may want to test additional states by expanding, collapsing certain things, or interacting with the page. But we'll actually cover some of that stuff too with inter intelligent guided tests. So the last thing to show is the thing I mentioned before about being able to customize the types of issues that are returned. By default, all issues will always be returned, but if your organization has a particular need where you're only looking at double A, single A, or triple A issues, you can customize that here to really just focus on just the things that you need to fix for the set of criteria that you need to match. So I'm gonna go ahead, use the recommended version of 2.1 AA. This will apply to both automated test and intelligent guided test. So and now I can see here, there was no additional issues that were raised for me changing the values. Um, so now that we've covered um, automated testing here, this co does cover a certain percentage of WCAG issues. And I'm gonna pass that along to Glenda to let her talk about that briefly. Awesome, thanks, Jason. So last year we published a report um, to let you know that we did some deep research into the issues and um, audits that we've done at DeQ. So looking at thousands of pages, hundreds and hundreds of clients, how many of the issues when we were doing full comprehensive WCAG T.1 testing were found automatedly versus how many were found manually? And I'll tell you, I was delighted to discover that consistently we're seeing 57.38% on average of the issues are found in volume 
via automation. So what Jason just told you, that first step of running Axe core rules can move you from zero to on average 57.38% with a very low effort. But then what does that leave? You know, I don't know about you, but I like to make an A and 57.38, it's not an A. It's a step in the right direction, but we still have 42.62% to go. So in, in we have a, a report uh, that this is in and you're feel free to pepper me with questions in the Q&A. Um, so that's what's covered with automated and that's not enough. So Jason, what do we do? I'm glad you asked. So this really brings us into intelligent guided testing with the Axe Step Tools extension. Like Glenda mentioned, automated testing will really only bring you so far. It's quick and easy testing, because again, it's just a click away, but intelligent guided testing is more in-depth testing to test some additional coverage that's not covered by that 57%. So with the power of, in with the power of intelligent guided testing, it is more in-depth testing, and it lets you test like an accessibility expert by answering guided questions. This is really great. This goes back into, you don't necessarily have to be an accessibility expert. It does help to have a little bit of knowledge here, but the tool does try to guide you as much as possible through these questions and answering them and finding additional issues based on how you answered those questions. And the great thing about this is it also lets you learn it how to do it correctly the first time. As you're answering questions, as you're going through these intelligent guided tests, you can begin to learn the types of questions that an accessibility expert may be asking as they're working on a page. So as you're developing, as you're working through these tools, you gain knowledge of how to do these things correctly by using the remediation steps and reviewing the questions. So a little bit of what we're going to go over with intelligent guided testing with Axe Dev Tools, um, we're, we're gonna go over interactive elements, we're gonna go over structure, and issues raised by keyboard. Unfortunately, I don't think we will have time perm permitting for images and modal dialogue, uh, but those are additional intelligent guided tests that you'll have to save for your own time um, in order to explore what's there. So we're gonna go back to our example site. I'm gonna leave this link up again for a second if you didn't see it the first time. So it's the same site as before, but we're going to use intelligent guided tools to take us a step further from where we got with automated tests. So going back to the example site, I have my DevTools extension open from before. There is two ways to access intelligent guided tests. Um, the first way is if you have not saved any test, um, below the start and scan part of your page buttons, there is a link to each individual intelligent guided test. We're actually going to start from saving a test. So we have our record here of where I've saved the test or sorry, where I've ran the automatic scan. So I'm going to go ahead and save this results. It's gonna ask me the title of the test. By default, it's gonna be the name of the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And now we can see here, we have an issue summary with our total number of results like we did before, along with our guided and um, issues and our issue severity. We haven't raised any issues yet because we didn't have any automatic issues. We resolved all those before we got here. But we can see here, we have our guided test of all the different tools that we offer. So let's get started with interactive elements. So interactive elements is a tool that's going to guide us through and try to identify and find issues with the interactive elements that we have on the page. So when I click start, it's going to highlight the elements that it thinks are interactive. So the tool has found, has identified seven interactive elements. So me as a developer or not, you know, someone who's familiar with this page, I can look at this or in review and make sure that it's captured all the interactive elements that I expect. So as I'm reviewing this page, how I might look at this as I would see, okay, we have our title up here, uh, up at the top of the page, we have our menu links, uh, start your order, menu and special. Below the what's popular section, we have uh, three elements there um, that is identified. But now it looks like something's missing. So I, I know that these frequently asked questions, I apologize, something going on here. Uh, there we go. I see these frequently asked questions. 
should be um, identified as interactive. So um, like we did with scanning a part of your page, I'm going to select those elements and see those selections show up here inside of the tool. So once I'm satisfied that I've made selections, I'm gonna click next and it's going to capture screenshots of each interactive element. And then it's going to attempt to intelligently group them into different groupings. By default, it's intelligent, um, or it's gonna group them intelligently by trying to group them with similar items. Um, so we can see here, we have three groups of, of similar elements. We can also group them by role or select no grouping, but we are going to continue with the intelligent grouping. And the nice thing about this is testing with interactive elements is a lot of pages have a lot of interactive elements. So this really lets us focus on just the ones that we wanna test or excluding similar elements. So for me, I know working with this, I know that the menu items are gonna be similar elements. So fixing accessibility issues there is likely to fix its accessibility issues with some of the others. So for group one, I'm gonna select the second element. For group two, I'm gonna select the first element. And then for group three, I'm gonna select the elements that we identified as missing earlier. That will bring us to an element cycler that will let us cycle through each element. And it's going to ask us questions up to validate um, specifics about those interactive elements. So it's gonna ask us questions about the accessible name, the role and the state. So I'm going to review these. I'm gonna say, this is our start your order button or start your order link. Uh, the accessible name is start your order. That looks correct. The link looks correct for the role and there should be no states found for this element. So I'm just going through here and answering the question. So I'm gonna say, yes, this does accurately describe the elements meeting. The link here is calculated, that looks correct. So I'm not going to change anything there. And there's no additional states that I need to change for this element. It doesn't appear because this doesn't look disabled, pressed, expanded, selected, checked, or read only. And there's no additional states I need to test. So I'm gonna click next element. Like we did for the first button or for the first element, I would review this, answer the questions here. Um, everything looks correct. So I'm going to go ahead and click to the next element. Now this last element is one that we identified was missing on the page. So I'm looking at this and I can immediately see it looks like something might be a little bit off. Our accessible name looks correct, but there's no role listed for this particular element and no states. Um, since this is a frequently asked questions with an accordion expand collapse component, this should probably have some sort of state that's identifying you know, whether it's currently expanded or collapsed. So it does look like the accessible name is correct, but I don't think this role is quite right. So I think this should probably be a button. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the role there to what I think it should be. And then for my element states, I'm gonna review that and go, okay, well, this expanded state is probably not correct. It should currently be in a collapsed state. I probably wanna test the expanded state as well. So I'm gonna click on test additional elements or test additional states, expand that element out and then come back to the tool and click on check element state and then select the state that I think it should be for there. So at this point, it should be expanded. So it looks like I'm done with all my elements. I can click next and now see that three accessibility issues are raised just as a result of me reviewing the steps and answering the questions. Now, this is a little more in depth. Again, like I said, it was in depth testing. So it does take a little bit longer than automated test, but this still only took me about four or five, about four minutes to answer the questions for this page. Obviously your time will vary based off the number of elements that you have. Um, but even still, it's a very it's somewhat short turnaround in order to get find accessibility issues using these interactive guided tests. So like we did with automated tests, I also want to resolve those issues here as well. So I'm going to click on three elements, the three issues that were found for interactive elements and follow the steps there in order to resolve those issues. So I can see here, um, it's telling me this element's role is missing or is not appropriate for the element's function. I can see where that, look, that is located in the page. That's a pretty complex selector. I probably don't wanna look at that. I can see, okay, this is a div element with a class of question collapsed and with some text of how safe my pizza be. So I think I know where this element is located now. 
So I look at the issue remediation in order to solve this issue. And it's telling me that I need to add an interactive role button to the element and use semantic HTML where possible. Well, I think I probably want to use semantic HTML. So I'm going to go back to my code. And this is going to be in the FAQ component. And I can see here we have our accordion panel. And I think this is the element that I want to change. So I'm going to go ahead and change this from div to button because I want to use semantic HTML. Save it. Come back here. And I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and fix the other issues that are here as well before I run through the tool again. So this particular issue is telling me uh, the element is, has missing or incorrect states or properties. Uh, so I'm reviewing this. It's going to be the same element because so I can see from the element source. And it's telling me I need to apply the following states to the element, aria expanded equals false. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that suggestion as well. Type in aria expanded, give it a Boolean value of false. Now I can go back to the extension and then it work on doing the last fix here. So this is also telling me that it's incorrect state or property. I can see it's the same element. Now to solve this issue, you need to apply the following states to the element, are you expanded true? But it looks like this is just displaying the current expanded or collapsed state of the element. So I need to make one more change to my code. I can see here, I have a state here that is attached to show description. That is going to be a Boolean value, show description. So when the description is shown, I want to expand this or have it be aria expanded equals true. When it's not, I want it to be false. So I'm going to go ahead, save that, go back to my code. I can also look at this element, make sure that it's actually how I want it to be. So now I can see that it's now a button. I have my aria expanded state on it. I've learned a little bit about what I need to do. I can expand it out, see that it now has the correct attribute. So I want to go back to DevTools um, and go back to the Axe DevTools extension panel and actually rerun this. So I'm going to close this panel, clear out the interactive element results. It's going to pop up a modal. I'm going to say clear results. Now I want to start new interactive elements guide. So again, I'm going to run back to the same steps that I did before to actually validate that I fixed those issues. Now we can see before when we had set, it had identified seven interactive elements. As a result of our changes, it has now identified the three additional elements that we did not have before. Um, so it does look like everything's correct, and I don't need to select any additional elements here. So I'm going to head and click next. It's going to capture screenshots again. And now, since I've already worked through some of these other elements here, I'm not going to select them again. And I'm just going to select just the element um, in group three um, that I had worked through before. So now we have element one of one. It's going to ask me to validate the accessible name, role, and state of each element below. So I can see that our role has now been updated to button because now we're using the semantic HTML along with the current state of expanded. So I'm going to keep this accessible name question is yes, because that's correct. I don't need to change the role now because it is now calculated correctly as a button. And I can see below in the L, I can see below in my expanded state, now it is listing the expanded state. But let's go ahead, test the collapse state just to be safe. So I'm going to click on test additional elements, collapse it, check element state. And now see that it now displays the state of collapse in the collapse state. I'm done here. And now I've resolved those issues. So again, this took in total, um, this was a lot shorter because now I just had to test just that one issue that I was trying to, to implement the fixes for. So this one was a lot quicker than the first time. And, and hopefully in the future, it would also be a lot quicker because again, I've learned something about the test. So I'm going to click on finish and see now that I have zero issues found. Great, so now it looks like we're done with interactive elements. So let's move on to structure. 
So like interactive elements, I'm gonna ask me questions about structure elements. So this means things like headers or language, um, application elements or media. So I'm going ahead and click it start. It's gonna say it's highlighted two headings we found, could find on your site. Do you see any that should not be headings? Again, I'm gonna review the elements that are highlighted. It doesn't look like any of the elements that it's highlighted should not be headings. So I'm gonna answer, nope, everything looks good. And it does look like there's a missing heading. So I think this what's popular should be a heading because it looks very similar to those other elements. So I'm gonna click on next, select that element, and then click next again. And then it's going to ask me questions about, does it accurately describe? For now, it looks like everything is correct. So I'm not going to make any changes to these questions here. Um, it doesn't, it's going to ask me questions about the page wide language. It does look like this page is primarily in English. So I'm going to say there's no additional sections that differ. It's going to ask me about the page title. Does it accurately describe the page? This is the landing page for a fictional pizza company titled Pizza Air. So this does look correct. And now we can see that we have one issue raised from here. Again, you know, as we did inside of the issue details, I can highlight the element to see where it is, I can inspect it, or I can find out more info about this particular thing. So this is going to lead us to a help page that's going to tell us more about that our visual heading text should be is not marked as a heading. So we can see here, there's a good example of some headings with a couple of H1s, or sorry, an H1 and a couple of H2s. There's a failed example of a P tag with a style on it. Uh, and, and, I, and I, so I wanna figure out where this element is. I can inspect it, go directly to that element and see, oh, this is a div with a class of heading. It looks like we're styling it incorrectly. So I can go back here and let's see that should be that should be in our what's popular so our order component i can see here i found my div class of heading of what's popular um, so i think that should be a level two heading so i'm going to head change that element to an h2 navigate back to the extension i'm going to go ahead and finish this test um, I can look at that issue again, just to see if there's anything there different that it's telling me there's not. So I'm gonna close this out and rerun the tool again to val validate that I've actually resolved the issue. So I'm gonna start the test and now it's actually identified the three headings that it could find on the site, the addition of the what's popular element that we just changed. So I'm gonna say, no, everything looks good. And now it doesn't look like we're missing any headings. So I'm gonna say, no, nothing is missing. And I'm going to continue through the steps. I'm just gonna skip through this really quickly um, to answer how we did before. Oops, I went a little too fast, I apologize. Um, and now we can see we have zero issues found. So we've resolved issues from structure. Again, running through the steps multiple time, fixing the problems that were suggested. The last tool that we're going to demonstrate real quick is keyboard tool. So the keyboard tool will net will test the page like a keyboard user would. And this is really cool because this test normally takes a lot of time. So this is done automatically for you without any additional input from on your end. So this is going to fire tabs on the page and find all the tab stops. Now, the neat thing about this is since we run through the other tools, some of the fixes that we actually did in active elements potentially fixed issues here because these frequently asked questions were originally div that did not have any kind of tab index or semantic element so they would not have been caught before or sorry they would have been caught by this tool if we had not already made those fixes so i'm going to answer the questions in the keyboard tool um, review the elements that are highlighted uh, it doesn't look like anything was skipped that should be and very quickly, I get to the end of the keyboard test results and there's no issues raised. So great. So that's all we have time for to demo for these particular tools today. But in order to reach the coverage that Glinda is about to talk about, you would need to run through all these tools um, kind of on your page in different states. Uh, and so this is not the, this is just 
you're halfway there. Uh, but once you run all these tools, this will really get you a lot closer to the finish line of getting to that particular set of, of increasing your coverage beyond automated, automated test. And so for that, I'm going to let Glenda take over from here. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jason. So a little bit earlier in this talk, I talked about how the automated Axe Core rules cover 57.38% on average of all issues we find. The amazing thing is the intelligent guided tests that you just got a, a, a sneak peek into are statistically raising that bar another 23%. And so if your developers will use Axe Dev tools, not just the auto, but adding the intelligent guided testing, they can get to finding and solving 80% of their issues before it even gets out of development. This is huge. Um, I believe that Liz has put in a link to the report that we just published on Monday that gives you some deep insight into this. And so looking at the next slide, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the percentages that we're seeing in the audits that we do. The intelligent guided test that brings the most issues up right now on average is the first one that Jason showed you, interactive elements it's about 27.75% of those issues uh, found across IGT, followed by structure, which is about 18%, followed by keyboard, which is 15%. That doesn't mean don't do the others because every one of these that you can stop in development makes for a less expensive, faster velocity to good products that are accessible. So do the images, do the forms, do the modal dialogues and do the lists, even though they're smaller percentages. And for those of you who can't see the screen, all of this table that I was just reading off is in the PDF report uh, um, that's at the bottom of the link that Liz shared with us. So with this in mind, um, we've gotten up to 80%, but that's not the whole thing. And I don't want to pretend like it's the whole thing. I want to be very transparent about what we still have left to do. So Jason, next slide. What's left to test? I believe in shooting for making an A. I'd love you to have 100% coverage. And so next slide. We have documented that extra piece so from 80.39% to, next slide, what's left to test, that's still 19.61%. You know, I'm not satisfied with a B. I want to get up into that A category. So I want to let you know that, next slide, we have documented the last mile. And we have listed inside Axe Dev Tools, when you get into the intelligent guided test, there is a link that says what's left to test. And you can see everything that still isn't covered by Axe Core Auto or intelligent guided tests. And this actually is um, uh, something that our IGT team wants to move further. So it won't always be at 19%. I expect that manual to be getting lower. Um, and I don't want to kid you, it requires deeper accessibility knowledge. I would not expect your average developer off the street to come in and be able to do this advanced last mile but know that we continue to want to solve this problem because just like we heard Joe Devin say, we're not satisfied with where the industry is. We wanna empower developers to do accessibility at a high velocity, and that's what this is all about. So next slide. I believe we are right on time for questions and answers. Liz, over to you. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason, Glenda, for a great session. Uh, we have a ton of questions coming in and we have about uh, nine minutes. So I'm going to get through as many as possible uh, and I will just dive right in. If, if um, y'all could help, uh, there is an upvote feature uh, in the Q&A portion. So uh, we're pushing the questions over there. If you could please upvote the ones that you, you really want answers to. Uh, like I said, I'll get through as many as I can. All right. Uh, so uh, this person says that they're a beginner to accessibility. So they were wondering how to know which level of WCAG to configure in the beginning. Oh, I want to answer. <laughs> um, in most of the world, I would go ahead and start with WCAG 2.1A and AA. Um, and then if you want to hit me up on Twitter or in Slack on Twitter, I'm at Goodwitch and we dis can discuss it further um, and you can tell me more about you. Awesome. Thank you, Glenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So this person says, this is just one page and several tests in different states. What do I do with a website that has thousands of sites? How do I best go about such dimensions? Yeah, um, that is a great question. And I will say that accessibility results rot the moment uh, man for manual testing rot. Sometimes when you're even testing the page, if you're not the developer and the developers are changing or the content contributors are changing that code underneath you. So you want to spend your manual testing very wisely. Um, and so what I do is I try and run as much automation as I can, like the 80 20 rule do 80 percent automation and then manual testing when i'm trying to monitor from a development standpoint i want to say all developers show me you ran axe core show me your axe clean and show me your results from your igt and we'll already be at at least a b quality right hopefully that helps awesome thank you glenda Okay, thank you also for all of the participation. All these upvotes are super helpful uh, in, in going through all of the questions here. Uh, so here's the next one. What criteria does DQ use to assign the priority or impact level of the issues found by Axtiv tools, such as critical, serious, moderate, and minor? Okay, so um, another great question. Um, what we did is we actually have an accessibility Jedi Council. Um, and we went through each of the issues and we said on average, because remember when we're assigning this default, we're not looking at the real issue on a real page. And so what we thought is on average from our, each of us on the council have like 15 years of experience in the business, where does this fall in the scheme of a one to five uh, from blocker, critical, serious, moderate, minor. And we assigned it at that point. You, as a person understanding the context, can make adjustments up or down. But that's where that default came from, our accessibility Jedi Council. Yes, I'm Yoda. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Glenda. Okay, quite a few uh, questions in here asking the difference between Axe DevTools Pro and other tools such as Microsoft Accessibility Insights or uh, Google's Lighthouse, both of which are free. Um, can can one of you kind of walk through the, the really high level uh, differences between Jason, them? Jason, can you get that one? Yeah, so Lighthouse is built on a subset of Axe Core rules. I don't remember off the top of my head which specific rules are there. Um, but if you're running Lighthouse, you're going to get a lot of the same accessibility results, the results that you would get from the Axe extension, just with a few marked out. Uh, for Accessibility Insight, it is also built on Axe Core. There's some additional tools that they use to do some of the similar things um, that we're doing with Intelligent Guided Test. Um, I'm not as familiar with what issues are raised there, but they are built on Axe Core as well. Got it. Thank you, Jason. Okay, does um, does Axe uh, Core uh, or Axe Dev Tools integrate with end-to-end -end testing suites uh, such as Jest or Cypress? Do you know that one, Jason? Not directly. There are some tools that I think DQ offers that does um, integrate. There are some different frameworks, community supported. 
um, that are built on top of Axcore. I am familiar. There is a, I think it's just ax dash dash ax is the one for just what was the other one liz uh cypress i'm cypress. cypress i think and i think dq does um someone can correct me if i'm wrong but i think we do main a cypress ax as well okay awesome thank you okay uh how could we fix the ax bugs when the issues occur within an external dependency or library yeah that's a tough one um and so what i think you do is you tell those folks to come watch axcon free recordings um and you get them started with a free ax tool and you explain to them especially if it's if it's a paid relationship that you will not renew that contract if they don't if they don't get their accessibility on. Um, otherwise, you can evangelize for getting those things fixed um, and you know, maybe get uh, other people in the community to help evangelize with you. Absolutely. Thanks, Glenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this one, we, we got a, a few questions about the roles of, of people using Axe Dev Tools. So is um, IGT best used by developers during developer phase, or um, is it better to be used by um, during the QA process to help QAs that are, are, are testing and doing manual tests? So I have my opinion. Um, I think that whatever works for you will be right. Um, this is specifically designed with a developer in mind. And so the advantage of fixing it, just as we were watching Jason use it, is the cost is at its lowest if you're doing it at the development stage. If you let it flow to the queue uh, quality stage, then you, you're back into a loop. Um, and it's more expensive. Um, and this is specifically designed for developers, not to say it won't be useful in other places. Jason, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think the point you mentioned about, uh, again, the turnaround time of like, if I'm a developer working on it, I can go ahead and make those changes right there and test the problem. Where again, if it goes to QA, that's a lot larger loop of, depending on what your QA cycle is, of going from development to pushing to QA to back and forth, it's a lot more expensive. So anybody can use it. I think that's the great part of the tool. You can use it in any part of your process, but obviously the further left in your process that you can put this tool in, it's gonna be a lot cheaper and a lot more effective. Great. Can I cherry pick a question, Liz? Sure. There, there's a fun one that just, um, it, it's got a number of upvotes. Um, about WCAG 3.0, yes. and are we looking forward to incorporating? Um, uh, absolutely. Um, we are determined to make accessibility as easy as possible um, so that you can be successful. And so right now, even though WCAG 2.2 is still in the oven, like don't eat it yet, it's, it's not cooked, um, we're already designing the rules inside um, Axe Dev Tools. Um, so yes, we're always looking forward to that. Awesome. Thank you, Glenda. Any others you want to cherry pick as a final one? I just couldn't I resist that one. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay, well, um, I'll just grab one one final one. Uh, Somebody asked if we provide training to developers on how to use this tool. Uh, what are those options? Can either of you um, speak to that? Where's my trainers? <laughs> <laughs> We definitely, we, I can speak to it a little. We, Good, we definitely I'm provide. Like, I can answer the WCAG and the level and yeah. Jason can answer how it was coded and where's my trainers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do um, offer, you know, training at DQ in, in general. Uh, we also are um, hosting webinars often and, and a lot of times they will be um, on Axe Dev Tools. Uh, I know that GAD is coming, Global Accessibility Awareness <laughs> Day is a, a few months out, and we usually do, you know, uh, a, a boot camp around that time, and then we like to plan things for developers and designers too. So just keep an eye out for other um, things coming from from us in, in the next few months, and I'm sure we can help train you and get you up to speed. 
All right. Well, with that, uh, we're at time. Uh, I do want to uh, thank Glenda and Jason uh, for such a great session. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to everyone for attending AxCon. Uh, we have uh, two and a half <laughs> days left of, of jam-packed sessions. So um, thank you so much. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of AxCon. Peace out. Bye. Thank you.